maybe somebody listening to this, you know, in their current position, or even as an entrepreneur, you have to take on these leadership qualities. Are there some like disqualifying traits versus trainable traits that we should be aware of? I, you know, it's it's hard to say. I've seen a lot of people rise into very high leadership roles that don't have a lot of the traits that I think are important in a leader. Um, you know, I, I was very specific in the subtitle of my book regarding heart. I think heart is really important in leading. I think heart's really important in everything, but a lot of people discount it and, um, and don't think it's necessary, and, and especially when you're in a publicly traded company where, you know, shareholder value is at the top of the list. And people think that heart and extraordinary shareholder value don't go hand in hand. And, you know, I, I, I don't agree with that, but I see a lot of leaders ascend into those positions who might not uh, you know, just in in general, when you re- when you see any company, any CEO, any you know anything that's going on outside in the in the you know corporate environment and even in political environment, r- r- regardless of where you are, you know, I believe heart is a really important co- um, ingredient in the recipe. Mm. I I, I want to poke at that as well because you know most people might have a stereotype around what a CEO is. And heartless might actually make the list of what people yeah. expect from a CEO. I think, I think. Because, I mean, you have to make decisions. You mentioned 20,000 people under your management. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you're in the cruise line. And I know we talked even before we hit record. You you were there during the pandemic. Things shut down. People have to, like, big decisions need to be made. And it's almost like, wow, if you're doing it with heart, it's almost like how much heart can you give in a position where there's so many people that rely on you? So I'd be very curious to know. How were you able to keep the heart in a place where most people label it as heartless? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people tell me that when they meet me and have conversations with me and, you know, and then know what I do for a living. You know, she's a CEO. Really? I don't know that I'm the stereotypical CEO. Um, and I don't know. I, I hate to I hate to stereotype anyone around anything. But you're right. You know, heartless could could make the list of C of traits in CEOs because people think you can't have heart and make it all the way to the top. And, you know, I, and I did, and I think it's one of the things I'm proudest of. You know, I, I realized when I left sales and marketing and came into operations that the operational environment is a very different environment than sales and marketing. There aren't a lot of soft edges in operations. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, and if you think about our industry and our operation, it's quite complex. It's huge. It's, you know, you've got ships all over the world. You have crew members all over the world. You're delivering every aspect of the guest experience. You've got containers meeting your ships. And if they don't make it, you know, your guests don't have, you know, don't have dinner and don't have, you know, a lot of the things that they need on their vacation. And so you're you're running this very complex logistical uh, organization that has so many moving parts, and a lot of it is very um, technical. And there's, um, you know, and it was all men, and it was, um, <laughs> you know, and I don't I don't mean to rub I don't again like to stereotype. But in the environment that I grew up in, in this industry, there was not a lot of heart. And the one thing that I realized as soon as I left sales and marketing and went into operations was that I need to do this differently. I need to do this with heart because I go on these ships and I see all these people from all over the world who are working so hard and leaving their families. And I didn't want them to work in an environment where they didn't know someone cared. And Mm -hmm. that I believe was one of the superpowers that I think I was able to have in this industry because it was so different. And, um, and I believe the discretionary effort you get from people when you lead with heart and they know you genuinely, genuinely care about them is priceless. And, um, Mm -hmm. and so I learned that um, bringing the things that were natural to me, like caring and like heart, 
served me very well and also served the people that worked with me very well as well. They were happy. Um, they felt cared for. They knew. And even during the pandemic, you know, that I actually had to lead with more heart during the pandemic than not during the pandemic because people were so afraid that we weren't going to come back, that they weren't going to have their jobs, that they weren't going to be able to provide for their families. So I had to give them hope. You know, I had to give them confidence, even on days I didn't have it. And so I, you know, I even, I, I had to flex those leadership muscles a lot more and then de-emphasize that driving revenue, profitability, um, uh, you know, all of those things that I'm also, you know, hyper focused on all the time. I had to, those had to go down and the heart had to go up a lot more. And, but, you know, that's another thing you have to learn as a leader. You need to pivot your style based on the situation you're in. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling with Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.